Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Andrea Hewitt. I'm the Industry Development Officer based at Longreach DD Office. Um, welcome to today's webinar, Best Practice 1080 Baiting Techniques. Uh, today, I'm brought to you by Making More From Sheep in conjunction with Leading Sheep and agri South Queensland, a service of the Department of Employment, Economic Development and Innovation. Our presenter today is Rosie Kerr, Rosie for the Environment Resource Management and the National Rosie has successfully minimised the impact of wild dogs on the endangered bridled male tail wallaby population I Idalia. Hopefully, hopefully from today's webinar you can take away a tip or a tool from this webinar to help minimise the impact of wild dogs on your property. Thanks for joining us. I guess we're pretty much going to deal with dog control, just managing it in different uh, ways. On the page I'm about to show you, I've presented a couple of ways um, with the, the district. Um, I'm sort of hoping that from this we can sort of get to design a bit more of a um, continuity, I guess, with baiting regimes and that because at the end of the day we're both looking for the same result. Even though we're not really protecting a lot, it's still part of our um, yes, people. And same as a lot of you guys that are, are managing properties, sheep, cattle, etc. And they need to be protected from dogs the same as our um, wildlife needs to be protected. This is our um, area that we cover from the Longreach District of, um, with the green spots are national parks. They're managed from the, the office in Longreach. What is a wild dog? Land management responsibilities, legislative and management environments, issues and challenges, and Western Region Pest Management. These are some of the things we're going to cover, or I'm going to cover in the presentation today. Feral dogs, any free dog without an owner and includes domestic dogs that are homeless or free human dogs that are hybridised with domestic breeds. The legislation goes to 1992 for hybrid dogs resulting from cross breeding of a dingo and a domestic. About 12 million hectares are managed, um, almost 4 million hectares managed to leading. So this sort of covered a lot of the state forests and that. Um, this presentation was done a couple of years ago, so a lot of those figures have changed. So the wild bar dog barrier and check fences, the blue is the barrier fence that um, most of you or all of you know about so that you can see that Idalia is on the outside of it. There is approximately 840,000 hectares managed land inside the barrier fence, mostly leased for grazing and other purposes. So it's an obligation on everyone to lease through um, lands and that. that um, yeah, it's that responsibility to manage pest animals and this as well. Um, Queensland Parks and Wildlife is obliged to manage wild dogs under both Commonwealth and state legislation. So they're the different um, issues um, that we need to manage dogs with, I guess, and it's the, the wild dog that they're referring to, not the dingo. We manage them so they don't pose a threat to public safety, social well-being and economic livelihood and conserve biodiversity values and maintain natural eco ecological balance and processes. Yeah, the social well-being is, um, I guess, the stress that the property owners have with economic livelihood that comes into it, so we're responsible for that with people that um, join parks, etc. Um, the public safety is the, is the tourists that we have with uh, in our parks, so we've got to protect them from the wild dog as well, and we've also got to manage our fauna, that the natural fauna that the park, we can't, you know, one species overrule and decline the populations of other species. There's a lot of conflicting legal obligations. There's community awareness, attitudes, and expectations differ. Whose problem is whose responsibility? Scientific thinking and recommendations, and my guess. And um, initially, when I went to Idalia, I had a lot of uh, from other community people, and everybody, blah, blah, blah. And it's over time and process that we put it without a change. They change the, I guess it's just the, the perspective of life to be just brilliant working with communities and the neighbours together to have success at Idalia with wild dog control. And I'm saying that we have had success because. I can see the increase in the nail-tail wallaby population and I guess a lot of you haven't seen enough, don't understand their size, um, their habits and that sort of thing. They're very small, um, 
female swallows is maximum. Um, the males to, you know, eight kilos, so they're, they're quite quite small and can be predated quite readily by wild dogs. How do we play a part? Um, strategic and operational pest management. We've just got a question. Yeah, it's not a question. I'm just not changing the picture on the screen. Um, yeah, we're having a few problems with some of the pictures coming up, so... Um, oh, thank you. I can hear quite well. You can hear quite well? You just can't see the presentation? Yes. We can start any baiting. We have to do pest management plans and then they have to be redone again. Mommy! 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 <laughs> Monitoring wild activity on protectorates. I guess it's something that like to um, get all on board with. Even though we do it um, probably a bit more intense at Idalia, it's a very simple process and it can be done quickly with your management project. The wild dog control activities, participants in all sh participation in all shy baiting programs, um, and baiting. incidental dog poisoning as part of the pest control activities, like feral pig control programs. So when we do feral pig control, we also have the potential of picking up a dog from the, the pig baits that are put out. Um, aerial shooting, um, macropod management do their aerial uh, count potential there to use those planes for aerial shooting of dogs that are mountains at Idalia. This is the control session. Um, this shows how we did the control. Any of you can see that um, photo that's on the screen now. That is a bridal nail tail wallaby at Idalia. So they're quite unique and quite distinctively marked um, with the white bridle up the side of their shoulder. So these are the methods. Aerial fixed wing helicopter and ground baiting. Method, the aerial fixed wing, has been used over the past number of years by Terek Terek Dog Trust Syndicate. A blanket baiting over Idalia was carried out with only a few spur lines over that. So for a number of years now, Terek Terek Dog Trust is the syndicate that Idalia is involved with and a majority of the baiting was always done over Idalia because of the, the neighbours um, using sheepdogs for their mustering purposes, didn't want to put baits out. And for contributes to other syndicates to assist with aerial baiting. The one that we do in the Longreach is um, Welford National Park down near Junda, Hellhole Gorge over towards um, Ada Bale Quilpie area and Blue Bush Syndicate which is up near Winton. Um, how, how do we recognise the dog? Um, a number of sightings, sighting of roo kills and a number of dog tracks along the road. Uh, when we do grading, it's a fine time to see the amount of dogs that are getting around because they just walk up and down the soft ground after it's been graded. And um, that is a yellowfoot rock wallaby, and that's another one that they prey on quite, quite readily. So when you see them dead around waters, we know that we've got a dog problem. This is a sand plot. This any of the ones you can see that I'm out. It's the sand plot that we use before we go pretty intense with the way that we do it, but there's no need for, for any of you to be with a full feeding frame across a runway quite sufficient and you can get much the same results. So we've got 60 frame sand plots on a transect 96 kilometres and the, the sand plots are a lot. So it's swept in the evening and then the next day the, the same process happens again. They're swept and... and um, from the data that's collected, it's put into a, um, a program which is called Allen Activity Index. Ian Allen from DD, Lee Allen. Lee Allen, Lee has assisted um, quite extensively with different work with wild dogs on Idalia. The map, any of those that can see on the screen now, is showing the sand plots. So all of those little lines across uh, sand plot. So it starts out on our eastern boundary, comes in down around the house, out to the northern boundary and around. The little red dots that you can see on the map are the bait stations, which I'll talk about shortly. The smaller circle around the, the brownish looking circle is the population of our male tails, so that's the only area that they habitat, and the bigger one is the distribution area. Uh, Dahlia is 144 hectares, so it's quite a large chunk of protected land. They're just um, aerial baiting. The green lines are the aerial baiting from the dog trust 
that were done. Um, over the last few years, they're starting to expand out into neighbouring places uh, before they were sort of more concentrated on Nigeria. What the monitoring establishes, it doesn't ex ex um, establish dog numbers, it establishes the activity of the dogs. Um, with experience and time, um, each dog print is registered, but you might get the same dog go over the, the next plot and the next. So over time you work out from your track size where your dog's going to, to actually how many dogs are, are working in the area. Um, does anyone have any questions? Do you really think that, that what you're doing, Rosie, and, and your baiting is making that big of a difference? Like, I, I've tried a lot here over the years, as you would know, and uh, I've got them worse year than this year than I've ever had. Yes, personally, I believe we are making a difference here for the fact that our population is <laughs> also their problem. Because of the rough terrain of Idalia, we don't have a big population of greys or reds um, or wallaroos. So, the, the, in the, the area that the work is where the nail tails sort of come down and the yellowfoot rock wallabies along the edge of the escarpments and that. Yep. Do, do your neighbours seem to be getting any uh, less dog movement or problem? Um, yeah, I've got really, really good feedback from all of my neighbours. John. Okay, very Thanks, Pete. Um, John Ford, do you have a question? Yes. Uh, these sand patches um, that you put out, do you dig them or are they for dog walkers? No, they're for dog walkers. There's no decoy or anything on them. Okay, the 1080 baiting. I'll quickly go over this. Um, I did a lot of um, bait trials in the early days of doing baiting at the any artificial baits that were placed on the ground or on these bait stations that they could be read for. Um, dogs were, were urinating or dropping feces. It's unexplainable why they did that. Whether it was the new um, sand plots put in. Um, that's, um, they're probably used to them now. And goannas were another problem with um, bait take. Although it was a 1080 bait, a goanna being a, a native species, they can't eat enough to actually do them any harm. So ants proved to be a bit of a problem. This is just a, a, a quick look at the database um, that we did initially with um, the bait cakes. So that was very useful information. Collared five dogs at our donation club with some tracking devices on them so that with where their distribution was. This was very successful. We, um, unfortunately, the file we put on the one that we, it failed, so we had no way of getting it back. Just some quick um, photos of where the dogs actually went. This was a female trapped at Idalia. He, the green markings was, I think, every three hours or something, it recorded the track of where they were. I went and just joined it up. It was going out into Mount Harden, just through the boundary and on the on mountain just outside Idalia, but the rest of the time it stayed in Idalia. The same with Dog 44, um, stayed within Idalia. This fellow here, he was trapped down the bottom end of Idalia and the next morning he actually left Idalia, walked up to the northern end, across to Emmett, um, down the, the area, ended up out in Hinge with a dam out there before he was killed. Um, we also do other pest management activities. We do feral pig, as I said before, which um, dogs often are the second pickup from, from pig baits, etc. Um, mustering goats, wild goats off national parks, and feral cats and foxes are also. Um, a point I'd like to bring forward for anyone that you know, thinks that they might have a go at this monitoring to have a look to see what activity they do have on their property. Um, a lot of places pick up foxes and a lot of people get very confused with a fox. Um, nine times out of ten, the, the fox would be... There is a possibility that it could be a young dog trap, although, you know, like a um, six-month-old wild dog has a print, is more oval than a wild dog track, and the two central claws are closer together than a wild dog track. 
Um, <clears throat> we do helicopter shooting at Welford and um, National Park for, for feral pigs and we also do um, trapping and baiting and fox control. So in conclusion, while dogs have the potential to cause adverse impacts, Queensland Island really is main for wild dogs and I think that's something we've actually grew to people now and with working with neighbours and that, um, I just believe that the four working together is the way that we're going to control wild dogs and it's not always possible to bait but there are other means.